I just finished Canada's Drag Race and um, I'm super excited to share it with you. I am watching it on the WOW Presents Plus whatever app. Uh, it is $3.99. You can get a 30 day trial. I already used it to watch UK. But if you are new, you can want, you can use a, get a 30 day trial and then it ends up being just under $8 because you'll have to pay for two more months at $3.99 in the US. Um, and you can watch them. It's 97, uh, 59 minutes. And so that's kind of, I, I was kind of like, I am so busy. This is so crazy. Can I really afford to commit to another show? Cause I don't like to commit to shows and bail out. Uh, cause I always disappoint people, but I decided I can do it. So this is Canada's Drag Race season one, episode one, eleganza, extravaganza. So we have, I always will struggle with the drag queens the first week because it's not just 12 drag queens. It's 24 of them. It is their, their look in drag that they come in, their boy looks for, um, or, or their non-drag looks is more accurate for the talking head interviews. And then potentially a second, totally different look for the competition. And so I have a really hard time. I will say if you watch in the app, I watch with my, I watch on my, on my phone up and down. They have a list of everyone from the episode. So I was able to like quickly look and see who everybody is. So we meet them all. I'm not going to hit all of them. Maybe I will. So there's Priyanka has been doing it for two years, was a kids TV host. So has previous performing entertainment experience. That's, I always look at, it's not just how long they've been doing drag. It's also a little bit their age because, um, and then kind of what else they've done. So if they, um, like you've seen, like Sugar Cane had only been doing drag race for a few years, but was in their forties and had been like a graphic designer beforehand. So there's a lot of previous experience. So I kind of look at previous experience as well. I didn't get everyone's. There was Ilana Verley, who's an Instagrammer, comes in and is like, I'm a bitch. Um, a whole bunch of it. Kira had a lot of color. Juice box, sensual gets stuck. Anastasia, Anastasia. It's a pageant queen. Lemon has been is a dancer. Twenty three was living in New York City. Scarlet Bobo, uh, circus freak, weird punk, all of that. Kind twenty one dancer known for YouTube. I'm gonna get to all this in a little second. Rita, a very thick accent. Um, Jimbo, 37, not the oldest, but I couldn't, when they were talking about who was the oldest, they were out of drag, and I was like, I have, I have no clue who you are. I'm sorry. They need to all wear. I've said this before. I want their name on the screen every time they appear, or like a big, like, hi, my name is Rita, because it takes me so long to figure out who they, especially the really, like, um, uh, like the crystal method type person who has... Um, that's just a recent reference for, you know, not the only person that's extremely different look. So that would be uh, Jimbo, I think, on this episode. We're like totally separate. Other than the fact that they're wildly different every time you see them, there's, they're hard to remember. And then Tyone um, Banks. Okay, so we get there. Um, and then we get introduced to the judges. So when I originally heard that Brooklyn Heights was going to be a judge on the show, I was kind of like, I don't know. Like, I like Brooklyn Heights. I like Brooklyn Heights a lot more before the finale. But anyway, I like Brooklyn Heights, but can she really fill RuPaul's shoes? And then they made it clear she is not filling RuPaul's shoes. She is one of three judges who apparently all three of them are going to be RuPaul. Even so much as going to all the mini challenges, presenting the, um, the uh, challenges, uh, even breaking up the lines as to who says what. I guess there's a guest host. So they've kind of taken RuPaul's job, chopped it up, and assigned it, which I'm okay with. And we're familiar with this. We have Project Runway, where they get equal voices. Um, uh, and another one that I watch is Ink Master. Same thing, where you have three equal votes. I think that's a great breakdown. At first I was like, eh, but then they, they did it. I am not familiar with Stacy and Jeffrey, um, but the way the drag queens reacted meant that they know something. And something I'm trying to bring into this is that this is not 
America's Drag Race being hosted in Canada. This is Canada's Drag Race. They even ripped RuPaul's name off of it. So the idea is it's clearly under the RuPaul Drag Race umbrella, but this is for Canadians. This is for them and I am viewing as a foreigner to their country. So I am trying to hold, I am gonna still comment with my own opinions, but I am holding loose to the idea that the drag scene in Canada for my, understand, I have a very limited view of drag. I am not a US drag expert. I am a drag race viewer who has watched every season. So I feel like I am qualified to speak as a viewer of a TV show that I have seen probably at this point, what, four, 16 seasons? But I am not an expert on US drag and I am definitely not an expert on Canadian drag. So I'm trying to hold a little loose. Um, now, if I was an expert in Canadian drag, I might have a lot of opinions that I could justify being angry about, but I'm not gonna do that. I can speak up when I understand something, but I'm just here to watch the show. Anyway, so they do a very standard episode, which I'm fine with. I think it's a great way to go. Let's pull out some classic challenges and let's get a feel for who these queens are and possibly where they differ. So we do a very typical, we're going to do a photo shoot and we're going to throw something crazy at you. We, we've seen this in other episodes. The fan is always one of my favorites because their eyelashes do this. You might lose a wig, their hair's everywhere. We've seen it on a couple of other seasons. Variations we've also seen was the pillow fight. We've seen underwater. We've seen jumping on trampoline. I think this is a great challenge. Um, I never, I never look at these pictures and go, sometimes you can see the weak ones where they just couldn't get it. But in general, they, they picked kind as the winner. Sure, why not? I don't have a strong opinion on it. We're getting to know the girls. I'm trying to adjust. There's a lot of Canadian specific like oh well they're they're representing Montreal or Toronto and I'm like I have no idea what that means so um, they and then they go into a kind gets to hand out mystery boxes everyone's like well don't screw me over they're mystery boxes you don't know what's inside of them so kind picks the gold one hands all the rest out they're all Canadian themed some of them I get sports I get I mean I, I don't watch a lot of sports but I understand what a sport is um, Anna Green Gables love Anna Green Gables some of them I don't really even get the puns but whatever it's fine it's stuff they all get in there um, Alicia Cuthbert is the guest judge I have no clue who she is but her name sounded so familiar and, and in a funny stroke I realized I have heard her name because she was a guest judge on Project Runway Canada, um, which I have seen that season probably 10 times. So I, uh, I have a number of the early Project Runway seasons on my, um, downloaded to a computer that I use when I blow glass. And so I've seen that episode or heard that episode a dozen times. So it was kind of funny because one of the things I remember from watching Project Runway Canada, I watched Project Runway US. Canada and, and Australia was that for me, Project Runway Canada was bonkers. I never understood their choices. And I was like, I wonder if Project Runway, I'm sorry, Drag Ra Canada's Drag Race is gonna be simple, similar or I don't understand their choices. And let's just say, I don't understand some of their choices. So uh, uh, Boa and Juicebox have a great discussion about um, being sober in the drag race community. I think it's a discussion that I think needs to happen anywhere in any in any community because there's so many communities that glorify being out of control drunk there's um writers have that you know right so uh, right drunk edit sober the mommy community with mommy juice and all that and so i think there's a lot of and i i imagine that drag is a billion times worse in terms of encouraging and fostering unhealthy behavior and i am so glad that we got a chance to, to know more about juice box and to hear about their journey to sobriety that they made the choice because they didn't like who they were they weren't able to perform at their best but there are some repercussions you would think that people would support people getting sober but a lot of times it's seen as like oh you're no fun but long term it's incredibly important so i appreciate them putting this episode in i gave a little a little hard heart to that i put a sad face next to ilana oh yeah so this is this was the thing 
the only outfit that I really remember, there was two, was Jimbo's. I really like Jimbo's. Um, so the, the entrance look, and I've said this before, the entrance look creates a point. And then the challenge look creates a line. I Meaning now you have two points, so we have a line. So we're going to see if ever, this is where you start seeing, is every look the same? Is every look a variation or is there a wide variety? And right off the bat, Jimbo goes from a black and white sort of Mickey Mouse, Mickey Mouse as, or Minnie Mouse, um, in the black and white to super color. And we see this, this journey and we go, oh, I'm already going, I want to see what Jimbo does next. I want to see where this journey is going to take us. To use a season 12, this is sort of a crystal method, um, um, or to use another, uh, an Evie or maybe Manila. Someone who we see big changes, a lot of variation. Um, that's exciting to me. Um, and so we have that. We have... I was a little confused though. I thought um, Kira, I think it is, had a great look. I was really surprised it was considered safe. I was really surprised by some of them that were in the top. I was a little confused. I didn't really disagree with the bottoms, but I was confused by the tops. And so I was a little bit like, okay, um, and I always say this with every season, so if you're new to my channel, um, that there's two competitions. There's the competition to win the competition, and there's the competition for the hearts and minds of the fans, the people who will buy your merch, go to your shows, watch your ch YouTube channel. Um, I always think, I always keep a close eye on the Instagram social media people because I know that a lot of that has to do with it has to do with producing con content. I'm not saying it doesn't. It's just a matter of consistent content. You see it in any sort of niche. Not everybody who has the most viewers necessarily has the best content. Sometimes it's, you know, people are hate watching. Some people are, so you always, you kind of don't know. You kind of don't know what they're going to be. And we definitely saw that I thought with Kind, who said that they're a big YouTube person and really threw a fit on the runway. It was really awkward to see. It was really, I think there's a way to say, I really like my look. Um, I appreciate your feedback. And I think there's a way to kind of pitch a fit. And we saw which way that went. So um, Lemon, I thought Lemon, I thought Lemon and um, Boa had similar problems, which is there was clothes on top of a body, but the body wasn't shaped at all. And I try to kind of hold that Make sure that I'm not imposing my own ideas of what femininity is supposed to be with a tiny waist and a big, you know, that there are, that women, uh, uh, biological women, cis women have different bodies. And so why would I try, why would I say that the only female body that's acceptable is this particular one? Uh, but I didn't necessarily find the shape to be very interesting, but I thought Lemon and Boa had similar problems. So I was kind of surprised that Boa was in a top versus safe because I felt the skirt was very, very basic and the middle, I found the boobs distracting. They thought they were lovely. I felt like they were like, like ding, just kind of odd, but I didn't hate it. They seemed to really like it. I was a little confused by it. Same with Rita. I thought it was really simple. I thought the actual dress was really simple and they praised it a bit, but then I realized that it came out with this big cloak and that was really the look, not the simple dress, but they kept showing the simple dress. So I kept going, what is going on? So I'm a little confused by some of the ones in the tops. I would have, I would have liked to see Kira, Kiara, sorry, I'm trying, I took notes really quick. I couldn't even remember the ladies' names the uh, drag queen's names. Juice was in the bottom, it wasn't very simple, the hem wasn't good, poor thing had a panic attack on stage, totally relate to that, seemed to try to keep a good attitude. Rita won, which was very surprising to me, I would have thought Jimbo was gonna win, but I'm still kinda getting a feel for these judges and what they value. Um, Kine needs to roll this attitude back in. <laughs> Um, I didn't find it enjoyable to watch. Maybe that's a way to say it. And then Lemon and Juice do a very strong lip sync. Not the best lip sync I've ever seen. This is not going to go, you know, but it was good. We've seen some pretty lackluster lip syncs over the years where 
you just are like, they just want to go home or something. This was not it. They were both fighting for it. And as they said, Lemon, um, juice, sorry, Lemon was safe. Juice went home. Juice is our pork chop, first ever to go home. I thought Juice made for one episode, made a really strong impression. I'd love to see them. I'd love to see them again. Um, I thought there was a lot of heart and character there. I am in general really excited to see a lot of these drag queens to see more from them. You really can't tell a lot with a single episode. Um, I don't necessarily know that I get the winner, but I'm not I'm not super heated by it. Um, and I think that Drag Race Canada should feel a little different. So I'm not angry about it. I wish them all the best. Hit me up in the comments. Did you watch it? Did you like it? Who are your standouts? Um, Kiera's a standout for me. Really interested in seeing where they're going with it. Jimbo, I think for me, is my early leader. Um, and then, let's see. Um, and then I will I will, will have to watch the episode a few more times to catch people because there's just 59 minutes for 12 queens is, is roughly five minutes a queen at best. Um, and half of that they were in and half of that they were out of drag. And so... I got, I, I don't necessarily know who was who. So thanks. Bye.